Okay, so in here, I'm going to go through uh, the whole process, putting everything together, making a force diagram, uh, breaking the force diagram into components, and then using those to write a net force in the X and the net force in the Y equation. So for this one, you've got a cable suspended from a rope, right? So in this case, the whole cable is the object you're looking at. You're not looking at like the point up here, you're looking at the whole cable. So if you drew a force diagram for it, it would look like this, right? There's just three forces. There's one rope pulling here, there's one rope pulling here, and there's the weight of the cable pulling down. All right, so to break that into components, right, These the two tension forces are pulling at an angle. So before we can do anything, we have to break that into components. So it would look like this, right? Um, instead of calling it X and Y, I've just gone ahead and because I know this is a 38 degree angle right here, that my X component will be the cosine component and my Y component will be the sine component. All right, so I just went ahead and labeled it. Instead of calling it FT2X and FT2Y, I called it FT2 cosine 38 and FT2 sine 38, right? Just got that step out of the way of calling it the sine of the cosine component. So there's two upwards components and then two sideways components, and we know those two should be the same and cancel each other out. So for the equations, they would look like this, right? My x equation right here, I've got FT1 cosine 38, which is this component, and FT2 cosine 38, which is this component, and they cancel each other out. And in the y direction, I have, calling up positive, my two sine components adding up, and then gravity going down. So in both those cases, the net force is zero. So if you can get to here, you're in good shape. Right? The, the next part is just solving it. Right? So if you, if you can get these equations, you can solve it. So in this case, um, because I'm talking about the only one I have enough to solve for is the y direction. right? Because in my x direction, I've got two unknowns. I don't know FT1 or FT2. But over here, I know FG, and I know that FT1 and FT2 have to equal each other, right? So what I can do is say FG, which is 125 newtons, is equal to, if I move FG over to here by adding it, then I end up with FT1 sine 38 plus FT2 sine 38. And because I know that these two ropes are pulling up, they're both, you know, these are the same angles on both sides, then I know that they have to be equal. So it's whatever half of 125 is. That 125 gets split up evenly in both ropes. Right, so I know that I'll just say FT1 sine 38 is going to equal, what, 60, 120, 62.5 newtons. Right, so to solve for the tension in the rope, I'm just going to draw out, let's say, FT1. And then here's the sine component, and there's, I'm sorry, the cosine component and the sine component. So I know that's 38, and I know this is 62.5. So if I wanted to figure out FT1, I could use cosine to solve for FT1. So I could say the cosine of 38 equals the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, so it equals 62.5 over FT1, and then I could rearrange that and solve for FT1, right? But the most important thing is that you could get these equations, because if you can get those in the diagram, then you can solve this. Alright, for this one, person's pulling a 50 kilogram box at a constant speed across the floor, constant speed, that immediately tells you right there that it's a net force is zero situation. Alright, so first thing uh, I gotta do is make the force diagram. And that would look like this. Right? So I've got tension, the rope pulling, I've got friction pulling back, I've got gravity, and there's a normal force from the ground pushing back. So if I break the tension into components, gotta do that because it's at an angle. I've got this right here. So again, I'm skipping the step. If I see something with an angle, this is the way I do it. If I see something with an angle, I'm immediately going to break it into sine and cosine, right? So I know that 
down here, if my angle's from the horizontal, this is going to be my cosine, this is going to be my sine. So that way it's a, another step I don't have to write out. Right? So I know this is the sine component, this is the cosine component. So A, an equation for all the forces in the y direction. Right? That's it. 0 equals Ft sine 30 plus Fn minus Fg, because these two are going up, and I call it positive, and down is negative. So if I want to calculate the normal force on the box, it would look like I need to solve this equation, right? So I'd be left with this Fn equals Fg minus Ft sine 30, right? All I did was I left in over here because it's already positive, and then I added Fg to get it over, and then I subtracted Ft sine 30, right? So I know that Fg is, let me see if I can find it, Fg is 50 kilograms, so that's 500 newtons minus Ft sine 30, so that's 200 sine 30, and the sine of 30 is a half, so it's 500 minus 100, so Fn is 400 newtons. So next, I'm going to write an equation for all the forces and components on the box in the horizontal direction. Okay, so that'll look like this. So I've got 0 equals Ft cosine 30 minus Ff, right? That was my, this component minus that one. I just randomly called this way positive. Okay, so uh, the cosine of 30 is like 0.7 something. So you can get a calculator and do that. But if you wanted to solve it, I could add frictional force over to get FF equals FT cosine 30. So for the next part, if I want to solve for the frictional force, right, I can just solve this equation. Uh, FF equals FT is 200 times the cosine of 30. I don't have my calculator on but cosine of 30 is, what, square root of 3 over 2? So if you do that in your calculator, 200 times square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2 is like 0.86 something, right? So you can do that. But that's how you would get friction, right? Solving the x equation. Okay, uh, for 3, you have a trolley car or a tram hanging from the rope, right? So to do the force diagram, it would look like this. And then I would need to break FT2, the rope going up at 75 degrees from the vertical, into components. And that would look like this, right? I kept 75, so some people will take the 75 degrees and then just go ahead and solve for this angle right here, which is 15. But it's the same thing. You could leave it as 75 and then just say that this is going to be sine and this is going to be cosine, right? When you break it up to components, it doesn't matter. So anyway, so to solve this, you would need to write your two equations. So that's easy, right? Net force in the y is 0, net force and the x is 0 and I'm gonna run out of room this is FT2 cosine 75 minus FG yeah it looks terrible and this is FT2 sine 75 minus FT1 so I'll let you try to solve this but if you wanted to what you could do uh, is I've got my angle here, I want to get the weight of the tram, right? So I know that if I draw the tension in the rope here, which is this one, has to be equal to FT2 sine 75, right? So if FT1 is 30,000, that means FT2 sine 75 is 30,000 newtons also. And so if that's 30,000 newtons, and I know that this is a 75 degree angle, then if I want to get the t t t t the weight of the tram, that would be the one that's equal to this side. So I'll call this my, I'll just call it Y for right now, right? So if I solve this for Y, I know this is my Y component, right? I know that would have to be equal to FG, right? So to solve that for Y, uh, it's that... I know that angle, I could use tangent, that'd probably be the easiest right now. Just say tangent of 75 is 30,000 over y, and then rearrange and solve for y. 
So y equals 30,000 over 1075. And then from there, that would tell you what g is. Okay, and this is the last one I'm going to do. Uh, this is a kind of interesting one because if you just draw it based on what it says and what you, you know, what you see, then it doesn't seem like it'd be right, but it is. So, you get a car driving up a hill at a constant velocity, where there's 1,200 newtons of friction and drag opposing its motion. Okay, so the diagram's going to look like this right here. Right, so there's gravity going straight down. There's the normal force going perpendicular to the ramp, right, so it's up at a little bit of an angle, and then there's the 1200 newtons of friction and drag right here, I call that FD, but then what's making it go up the ramp isn't the engine, instead it's the, the friction between the tires and the road, right, so if you can imagine, here's a tire, my attempt at a tire, and there's the road, as the tire comes back this way, it's stuck on the road, right? So if the tire is pushing this way on the road, I'll call that FT, then that means the road is pushing on that tire that way, right? Because the tire wants to go this way, it wants to slip, but friction is making that tire roll forward, right? It's making that point stick. Just think about like if you walk where you push your foot, what would happen if you slipped? Your, slip, your foot would go the opposite direction from where friction is actually pushing you. So when there's no friction, you slip. That's why your foot goes backwards. Anyways, so here's the diagram broken down. And again, because this is on a ramp, that 22 degree angle, if I can draw this without screwing it up like a tire. Oh look, it does that. Perfect. So your 22 degree angle corresponds with that angle right there. Right, so this is gonna be my cosine. This is gonna be my sine. Right, that component in that little triangle that I terribly drew right there. So it, that's always true on a ramp, right? So here's my sine component, here's my cosine component. Right, so there's my broken down diagram. And here's my equations, right? My y direction Fn minus Fg cosine 22. And then in the x direction, I have the drag plus the sine component of the weight minus the friction force, right? And from there, you can solve all the rest of this, right? If you want the weight, you can do this one. If you want that one, right? Easy. Okay, so that's it. You should be, at the least, you should be able to draw the diagrams, break it into the components, and then get the force equation, because this is the most important part, right? If you can do this, you can solve all the math, hopefully. It's just algebra.